His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, issued two edicts for this year. Edict 49 allows companies with foreign capital to undertake some commercial activities outlined in a list attached to the edict with an ownership rate of 100%. Meanwhile, Edict 50 allows companies with foreign capital to undertake some commercial activities highlighted in a list attached to the edict with 49% ownership. The two edicts will be subject to the provisions of Article A of the Commercial Companies Law promulgating by Decree Law 21-2001. In a message to the world marking the UN World Habitat Day today celebrated this year under the slogan Housing in the Centre, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister urged the international community to go faster with the enactment of formally agreed sustainable development initiatives, ensuring that focus should be given to the most needy communities. He called on the world to continue a collective human effort to improve living conditions of dwellers of war-torn areas. He added that the situation would be seriously worse if the international community reiterated from taking necessary steps to find effective cooperative mechanisms to stop the bloodshed, save lives and direct resources and efforts towards achieving a secure and sustainable life for all human beings. He stressed the importance of adopting effective visions and policies to counter development challenges, particularly conflicts and terrorism. He called on the international community to work harder for a world free from threats through the adoption of sustainable development programs meant to achieve humankind's aspirations. The Premier reiterated that footage of painful scenes of the displaced migrants fleeing areas of conflict across the borders must hurt human conscience and urge all human beings to exert their best efforts to help these peoples live in security and stability. He asserted that the World Habitat Day is an occasion to highlight how developed, advanced and fair they could be evenly be if humans' wills and efforts were united in terms of construction and reconstruction for the good and benefit of all humanity. He said that the UN adoption of the housing in the center as a slogan for this year's World Habitat Day cast on the world a responsibility to move forward for further cooperation to face the unfortunate situation in some regional countries in terms of chaos led to the displacement of thousands of families deprived of their right to live in dignity and security. He also asserted that Bahrain has worked very early on the issue of housing and set plans and allocated budgets in order to provide adequate housing for Bahraini citizens. He said it was one of the pioneers in launching housing projects in the region in the 60s to create integrated services in modern cities. He commanded the government of Bahrain in light of the directives of His Majesty King Isa when King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa, who made the housing issue a focal point by allocating budgets to finance the construction of many housing projects, and work is still continuing to build more cities in various governorates. He also said that Bahrain joins all national efforts with deep belief that the protection of mankind and implementation of stability, security and prosperity of all nations depend to a large extent on a collective human effort. The Premier pointed that the celebration of World Habitat Day coincided this year with the celebration of Bahrain of granting former UN Habitat Programme Executive Director Dr. Anna Tibai Juka at the UN headquarters in New York in recognition of her efforts and large contributions to support the efforts of countries in in terms of sustainable urban development. He described Khalifa bin Salman Habitat Award as reflecting Bahrain's strong commitment to back global development efforts. The first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of Bahrain Athletics Association, His Highness Sheikh Khaled bin Hamad Al Khalifa, instructed to start preparations for the launching of the second edition of the Khaled bin Hamad Award for Graduation Projects Forum. It is aimed at Bahrain-based universities, including all disciplines of engineering and IT. Scheduled to start in December, the event is organized by the University of Bahrain. His Highness affirmed that this award translates His Majesty's instructions of supporting Bahrain in youth, especially in education, as this will help improve the quality of university graduates who play a key role in the continuing development of the nation. Sheikh Khaled noted that the wise leadership has always been keen in embracing the youth as they are the driving force of the development process in Bahrain and are a key component of the reform program launched by His Majesty the King. He further stressed the need of keeping pace with the rapid international developments in education. He said that the main goal from this award is to give the youth the opportunity in scientific innovation and contribute in having a new generation of youth equipped with advanced education. He lauded the efforts of the University of Bahrain and its president 
President, Dr. Riyad Hamza, in organizing the award, wishing them all success. On the occasion of the National Day of the People's Republic of China yesterday, a gallery of Chinese art was unveiled at Bahrain National Arts Center. Daniel DePorto reports. The Chinese Art Gallery was officially opened at Bahrain's National Art Center last night on the occasion of the National Day of the People's Republic of China. The three-day show, themed Peace and Development, Ocean and Environment, was organized by the Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities with China Mix and the Chinese Embassy and was sponsored by Dragon City. I would like to, um, to say, you know, and to convey my special thanks to the Embassy of China and to the Dragon City management for creating such a wonderful um, uh, artistic exchange. We're delighted that the Art Center is hosting uh, various Chinese artists for three days only, so please make sure you come and you enjoy this, uh, this exhibition. Dragon City uh, is trying to be, uh, to act as a, a a, a business hub in, the, in Bahrain and in the region. But in actual fact, Dragon City Bahrain is also trying to uh, bring more Chinese culture and create more chances to exchange the cultures between the two nations. A delegation of Chinese painters has traveled to the kingdom on this occasion with hopes of developing long-lasting artistic networks in the region. The visiting artists will tour Bahrain to take in its sites and heritage and conduct live drawing sessions. The Kingdom of Bahrain and the People's Republic of China enjoy historic and current economic and cultural ties, which are ever deepening thanks to active engagement on both sides. China and Bahrain enjoy very good relations. Both the Chinese people and the Arab people are great people. We all possess splendid cultures. From old days, we always exchange the cultures. And from now, we should work hard to strengthen the culture, culture exchange activities. This is the event exhibition just beginning. We, we will hold a lot of the uh, series of uh, uh, culture activities just like this with uh, work with my Bahrain friends. Reporting for Bahrain Television, I'm Danielle Deporto.